everybody, welcome back. It is almost fight week for Karate Combat 43. We're here with the chat, Ross Turbo Levine. Ross, you know, uh, it looks like you're just uh, trying to collect belts like that because it's collecting stones. So That's it, man. When did this opportunity come up? I know you've been looking and searching for a fight in your <coughs> weight division, but, you know, for one reason or another, nobody came about. So all of a sudden, you're going to, you know, step up and wait, and you've got Smile and Sam Albee in front of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, we've been talking about moving up to 205 for a while now. So even before my last title fight, when I fought the Castaneda for the second time, we were considering moving up to 205. And then uh, everyone in that division has been pretty elusive as well. So it, it's been challenging just getting fights in general. Mm -hmm. um, so when this opportunity popped up for Vegas, uh, we told them, I was like, listen, uh, of all the fights that I wanted to be on, this is the one. Like Vegas is bucket list, like, you know, fight capital of the world. You've got the American, you know, so to speak, superstar for karate combat. Like you got to have me on their biggest event. So right, right. Um, it was something that they committed to with me. They were like, yeah, when we do the show in Vegas, you're on, um, you know, ideally it was going to be for the middleweight title. And then when all of those things kind of fell apart, they were trying to bring in some big names for that division and it just didn't work out in time. Um, and they moved me up to 205 and they said, all right, well, we have an opportunity with Sam Alvey. And I was like, title fight? And they were like, no. So initially, mm -hmm. uh, the two guys at the top of the division, so to speak, uh, Ashraf Uchen, Moroccan, 4 0, and then um, Antonio Arroyo, ex UFC middleweight, 2 0, two knockouts in karate combat. They were supposed to fight. I'm not sure what happened, but that fight fell through. So I told them, I said, listen, I, I know you want me to fight Sam. Um, I'm happy to fight either one of those guys for the title because I really wanted a title fight, you know, like mm -hmm. a five round fight. That's yeah. kind of my thing now. So, um, and apparently Arroyo said no, didn't want to fight me, was going to wait to fight Uchin for the title. And they were like, well, you're out, Sam Alvey, you're in. We'll take this as a title fight, you know, give me the opportunity for a champ champ status. So that's how it all came about, man. Initially, it was a three round Sam Alvey fight, and now it is a uh, bumped up to the inaugural heavyweight title. Now, I'm glad that that all worked out, and I'm sorry that mm -hmm. the other guys, for one reason or another, decided to not fight or couldn't fight or whatever, but the opportunities there, boom, you strike, you take it. How does this change? You know, you're going from 185 mm -hmm. to, to fighting at 205. It's a heavier weight, so how does that affect you doing training and, you know, change your, your, you know, your kind of strategy for doing things? Yeah, so, I mean, camp has been harder. Um, mm. a lot of people think like, oh, my training camp was going to be easier because I don't have to cut weight. Like, no camp is way harder because I don't have to cut weight. If you think about it, typically the last like three to four weeks of camp, you start to have this shift where it's like, all right, maybe if it's, let's say it's an eight week camp, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. The first, the first four to five weeks is all about skill building strategy, all that good stuff, like fight oriented things. And then the last like three weeks is like, all right, well, we, now we got to start depleting, pulling back we have to taper our training so you don't get sick or hurt right and now our main focus is we got to make weight um that is not a thing so we've done the last i mean well you know how i am i'm always training but mm -hmm. as soon as we found out about this title fight and 205 it's like well training has been like balls to the wall every single session so it's been it's been hard man it's been a hard camp a lot of big dudes that i'm working with so like you know, it's just, uh, it's a lot on the body, but um, I came out of it super strong. I'm very healthy, no injuries. I'm like ready to rock, man. That's uh, it's going to be good to see you at like more. I mean, this, this is kind of your really like walking around weight, you know, maybe. I walk maybe around, I do walk around a little heavier. I do walk mm -hmm. around a little heavier. I typically walk around between like 210, 212 is where I found my home. That's where I feel really good. I, I'm still athletic. I'm not out of shape. I'm still eating clean, but my body likes to sit up around that, that spot. Um, so for me, like I actually, I'm probably going to come in a little underweight just because I personally feel my best around like that 200, 201 mark. That's when my body's like firing on all cylinders. So, I mean, that's what I expect to be when I walk into the pit. So, you know, with that being said, uh, Sam has been doing his best. He's been all over Instagram. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's been really promoting the fight. Uh, he, I mean, to give him full credit when, when we did interview with him, he called out. He said he called a shot before he had even stepped a toe into the pit and said, mm -hmm. I want Ross Levine. Ross Levine says he wants to come up. I want to sit him down. Uh, I'll, I'll have that belt. I mean, he's doing a great promotional job. He's supposed to got Sean Strickland in his corner and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, when you see that, I mean, I know this is all part of the fight game and promoting and everything, but is that extra fuel for motivation when you see that? When I see what? His when he, when you see or, what? He, or... What, like when he when he's doing promoting, like hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna send Russell Levine back down. You know, I'm gonna do this, that, and the other. 
you know, I, you Everybody never really get that. Yeah, I know you never get involved in all yeah, the, you yeah. know, tangle up in that stuff. But Bro, you, been, you don't produce. Been, you never put been, anything else out like that, right? There's been there's been eight people that said they were going to do that, and <laughs> eight of them have failed to this point. So like, so you know, odds. Is, they're supposed to do that. They're supposed right. to say that. And I like, dude, you know what? Sam is Sam. He's um he's funny. Mm-hmm. Honestly, Sam's a pain in my ass, man. Like, that dude's <laughs> been like, I'm not joking. He has commented on all of my posts. Yeah. He likes my posts. He sends me DMs. He like tunes into my Instagram lives. Like yesterday I did an Instagram live. I was on the bike and I, and Sam's like the first one in there. I was like, bro, leave me alone, <laughs> man. Like, get out of my face. <laughs> that, so, that's, like, that's funny. Just, that's just Sam. That's just right. Sam, man. And like, you know, the, the thing is like what I've been telling everybody is that that's him. And, and I truly believe that's genuine. Like, I really do think he's just a nice guy. And um, he's just like, yeah, anything I could do to help. And like, we're, we're all doing it. We're all in it together. Like, I really think it's that way. However, I also feel that he has been successful in his career because of that, because a right. lot of other people, they're like, oh, he's not, you know, he doesn't, he looks very unassuming. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. He's like super friendly. He's super nice. He's buddy, buddy. And everyone takes that as like, they relax a little bit. Like ah. he's just, he's just here. He's just happy to be there. Like no one expects him to win and then they let their guard down and then he knocks people out. So everything that he said, like when you see the interactions between us, I've been pretty cold. Like even to the point where some of my friends are like, dude, you're acting like an ass. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm like, I need that for me because yeah. I need to keep myself on task. Like this dude is a target. He's going to try and knock me out and I'm not letting that happen. And I'm going to destroy him in front of everybody and win my next championship. Like, there's a very firm line of like, yeah, I appreciate all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm messing him up on uh, next Friday. You know, there, there's no doubt about it. You know, there's something to be said about that <clears throat> because you expect, you expect energy one way or another. Like if you mm-hmm. expect a guy to come out super aggressive and you've trained and read it yourself for that aggressiveness yeah. and then the, the, the bell rings and he's very passive and he's very slow, almost kind of a lull you to sleep type That's of strategy. That's how Sam is though. Sam yeah. will slow, he slows you to death. He, he invites you in, invites you in. And he's like, he's not slow, man. Sam is like all fast twitch. He's super snappy. Like things come at you fast and quick. And he's for, for a big guy, he, he moves um, and he's got some dynamite in his hands. So like, you better believe we're going to be very, very, very well prepared. But I'm just like not buying into all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's not to say that I have to be, I'm not trying to counter that with anything. Right. Um, I'm not trying to be like, I'm going to kill you this because he's seen all of that too. Mm-hmm. But I just, for me, I need to keep myself like very on task. So mm-hmm. I'm like emotionally and, and like mentally spiritual and, and centered and ready to go and do my job. That makes complete sense. And a little apologies. One of my dogs is making her appearance on this video. I wasn't podcast. sure if that was yours or mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know what? Actually a quick, so you guys got a dog. Uh, you got, were cat yeah. guy. And you've been loving on this dog, man. You've been all That's over great. this pup. Coco's amazing, man. She's so funny. <laughs> well, you know, you know, he's definitely gonna check out. So I uh, mentioned Sam. Hey, Sam. You know, shout out to Sam. I know you're gonna watch this. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but you know, when, when, as we start to go towards the close, we're less than a week away from fight day. What are your training sessions look like? Like, for example, what do you got on tap today mm-hmm. that you you got going on? So today, uh, I mean, honestly, this week was was really just sharpening the knives. All of my hard, hard training, all my hard sparring, I usually do two weeks out, just let my body recover, so I'm feeling great coming into the pit. Because you never know, like you kick an elbow, you get Mm -hmm. a little cut or something like that. It's like, you don't want to deal with that a week before my fight. Um, So, you know, I've always done best, like hard sparring two weeks out. And then everything else is like hard pad sessions, heavy bag, like really gut check type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Today is just recovery because I fly out on Monday. So Mm -hmm. tomorrow's a rest day. And then um, Monday when we land, we'll probably do a pad session, just get a little shakeout going. But today I'm actually going to go to the gym, sit in the sauna, swim a little bit, work some cardio nothing crazy, just kind of feel good stuff. And, um, I like the swimming over running or the elliptical or the bike, just it's, it's low impact and it's good for my breath work. And I like it. Like, for example, when you're swimming, you're just talking about, are you getting in and just doing laps or are you doing something kind of specific to kind of help with other things? 
Yeah. So today's, today's session is going to be pretty simple. Uh, you know, I get in the pool after I do my sauna, I stretch out in the sauna, just kind of get a good sweat going, warm up. And then, um, I'll get in the pool. I'll do like five laps back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take a little bit of a break, let my heart rate come down, then four and then three and then two and then one. And then I'll recover a little bit. Um, maybe I'll step out. Maybe I'll sit in the jacuzzi for a couple minutes, just to kind of warm back up. And then I'll jump back in the pool. Um, and then from there, what I do is I'll do like every minute on the minute for 10 to 15 minutes, I'll do breath hold drills. So I'll go a full length. And uh, I'll take as little breaths as possible. Now I'm, I'm basically taking one big breath and then going and I can go the whole way. Uh, but it's challenging because, you know, you got to push off, you're expending energy. And then by the time you get to the end of that pool, it's like your heart rate's elevated. You haven't taken any breaths. So it's really good training to learn how to control my breathing, lower my heart rate. And then at, basically I have about 30 seconds to do that. And then it's go again. So it's, you know, ramp up, ramp down, ramp up, ramp down. Um, so I do that for anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. That's definitely a good training tip. And, you, you know, it does simulate that. You got a minute to rest mm -hmm. on the stool, calm yourself, get your breath back and then go to war again. So, yeah. Ross, we are definitely at our time. I can't wait to see it. Of course, Karate Combat 43, it's in Vegas. If you live near that area, one, you should be there. Sport Karate Takeover, just like we were saying. But if you can't make it, it's free on YouTube. Follow Karate Combat channel. Mm -hmm. uh, Champ, can't wait to see uh, what type of, uh, you know, masterpiece you're going to paint this time. Thanks Looking for taking the time, it, man. Always, always. And make sure you guys can check out some new merch. We got the team turbo versus everybody. <laughs> We're in here, man. So click the link in my bio, follow me on Instagram. Um, and yes, definitely. If you're not there live, we're going to have a ton of support. I would not be surprised one bit if myself and Raymond and Robbie and Elijah, if we all have the, the biggest pot bigger than Pettis and Henderson. So make sure you guys are there live, support the Sport Karate crew. Um, and if not, make sure you turn tune in live on YouTube. Said from the champ itself. We'll be back soon, guys. Thanks.